this is an acoustic research E L T E T L one. Uh, this was um, part of their Connoisseur series in the 80s. I believe it was 84 through 85, 85, 86, something like that. I have to look it up, but anyhow, I picked this up for um, relatively decent money and can't complain about how much I spent on it, but uh, anyhow, I put this Ortofon mat on it, but um, originally came with an acoustic research mat on it. Uh, Some Echo MMT Premier Tone Arm. Um, I've got mounted on there a Ortofon Quintet Blue um, moving coil cartridge. It's a decent cartridge. Really great arm. Um, it's got a power 33 and a third, and then you can switch to 45. Pretty cool. Um, whereas all the other uh, turntables that they had previous to this, I believe it was a, roughly around the same time, it was the uh, the AR, the Legend, I believe, the AR, the turntable, and um, the ES1, which was roughly maybe a year or two earlier than this. I believe this came out in 86. Um, the plant's in pretty good shape, um, a couple of nicks here and there. Um, I basically just did a quick wash down with a little bit of acetone, and I went and I put, um, uh, Walcott, um, rejuvenation oil on it, and it turned out pretty decent. I just got to put another coat of wax on it, but... Uh, the arm board is, I believe this arm board is Delrin, I think. But, um, I have a little bit of an issue with the bounce on it. Uh, it's a little bit, it kind of rotates a little bit, and it's bouncing slightly at an angle. Um, these sub-chassis sub floating suspension type turntables, you really have to, kind of get them just right, you know, between the ARs, you know, starting with the ARXAs, the XR, ARXBs, um, EB, EB101s, you know, you know, the Thorns, Lins, um, you know, basically anything with these floating sub-chassis on it, but, you know, each turntable manufacturer has some sort of cranky, weird definition of how they're turntables should float around and whatnot but you know Lynn's very specific you know it has to bounce straight up and down and then that bounce has a decay in it over a certain amount of time this is supposed to have a little bit less of a bounce because there's supposed to be some foam if I can find one there's foam that sits inside the spring and that basically just gives the when it's all set up it gives the platter and the, the bounce a little bit more of a, a quicker decay, more or less. Um, I decided to take the foam out just because of the fact that at the end of the day, I was having a really difficult time getting this tuned, and I still couldn't get it tuned right. So this is probably either due for new springs or spend another couple hours tearing it all down and... Um, uh, spending the time to uh, get it uh, tuned properly. Um, but, you know, like I said, with these particular sub-chassis type uh, floating suspension turntables, there's this whole thing about how they are supposed to bounce, and you, you can see how this actually kind of has a wobble and a wave in it. And it's really not how it's supposed to be set up. Um, it's supposed to bounce straight up and down and it's supposed to decay over a certain few moments. Uh, I think two seconds, three seconds, something like that. But um, otherwise, it's a great turntable. Um, I originally had it set up and when I first had this set up, um, I leveled the plinth. I tuned the best I could the suspension 
but I forgot to level the suspension with the plinth. So then whenever I got it over to my uh, media rack, I end up going to level off the platter, and I've got a set of adjusting feet underneath, and the whole plinth was kicked like this, and the platter was level, but the plinth was cockeyed. And quite honestly, it was really not cosmetically appealing. Turmoil, I would say. Rather, rather turmoil. But anyhow, you know, but like I said, it sounded great the few weeks that I was using it before I got the Lin. Um, this particular turntable, uh, it, it is a, a pretty heavy uh, plinth. Uh, there's not much as far as the guts going on inside of it. You know, it's just basically, um, you know, the, 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 the sub chassis frame runs lateral this way. And then the T goes this way. Um, the motors up in the far left corner there, or the far back left corner. Um, and then the pulley, I, I can pull this off for you basically that is the inner platter as a belt that goes around it same belt for ARXA um, and this just pops right out of the bearing at some point or another these were slightly notorious for having bad bearings in them and so what this is is that this particular type of bearing for this platter um, the there's a ball bearing it's a quarter inch ball bearing that sits down at the bottom of the well in the shaft and this didn't come with that quarter inch ball bearing so I had to um, source one out and what I ended up choosing was just a regular steel ball bearing for now. There's a few other ball bearings that I've got. Um, eventually probably I'm going to order something that has a little bit more of a uh, smoother texture to it. I mean it's stainless steel. It's about as smooth as you're going to get for 30 cents. But at any rate, but, so this ball bearing sits, uh, I'm sorry, the platter actually goes down to the shaft and sits on top of that ball bearing. And of course it spins on top of that ball bearing. Now the ball bearing sits at the bottom of the well. And that ball bearing sits on what they call a sapphire a sapphire bearing. And the sapphire, if this inner platter is dropped into that well good enough with that ball bearing, it'll crack that, that sapphire bearing. And so there's a whole thing when you go to put this in, there's a certain amount of oil that it's, I believe, like 0.3 milliliters. It's, 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 it's literally like four drops worth. This platter needs to be cleaned up. But at any rate, when you set this down, what you're basically doing is you're setting it down and it actually... The, the shaft goes down and it hits a certain fluidity that the, that it's the, the shaft, it takes a few minutes for that shaft to sit down on top of the ball bearing. So you can't push it, you can't force it in there, and you definitely don't want to drop this sub platter on top of that bearing with that, that sapphire down on the bottom. Now the sapphire on this is not in bad shape. It has been... Um, the inner platter at one point in this turntable's life had been dropped down inside of that wet well. And, well, it's not in bad shape, but it could... I mean, there's really nothing you can do. You can't really replace it. That's the one thing about these... Um, this particular turntable, the, EL, the ELT-1, is that you can't find a lot of parts for these. Um, there's literally no aftermarket parts of these, and to try and find original parts for this is nil. For example, just recently on, I believe, eBay, this part switch, I'm sorry, this, this switch, 
that goes to the control board, 400 bucks, $399, buy it now. The control board, if you needed to replace it, another 400 bucks. You would think that the guy that was gutting the turntable, the seller that was gutting his turntable, would sell the board and the switch for 400 bucks, but no, he was wanting 400 for this and 400 for the board. The motors, forget it. I'm not even going to go there. It's crazy. These are basically virtually impossible. It's an it's an AC motor. Um, you can you can get these. These are the same motor that they used in the ARXB, the ARXA, and the ARXB. Um, they were made by. I'd have to look up the name, but but you can find replacement replacement motors for these, but they have to be a specific voltage and a specific amperage, along with being a 300 RPM. I believe it. I believe this is a 300 RPM. Might be a 250. Um, but I believe it might be a 250 at three thirty three and a third. Maybe I, I I don't know. Maybe somebody could comment and. And probably knows more about it than I do. <laughs> Anyhow, um, you know, like I said, this is not really a bad turntable. It sounds great when it's leveled right, and you know, I had the Quintet Black on this, and it sounded e excellent. And since I got the Lin, um, I took this off, off out of my media rack, and uh, I've been fooling around with that Lin. And like I said, this between the Lin with the setup that it currently has, the iTalk arm and whatnot, it, it's kind of sounding a little bit, the highs are a little bit off and kind of just like running right through my ears and making my ears bleed a little. But um could be room acoustics. could be summertime. The electric is, I don't know. It's, well, it's not summertime yet, but... Um, I'm going to probably do another video about that eventually, about room acoustics and the electricity that uh, comes in through the mains and how that affects the stereo systems. All that's going to be, I'm going to cover that eventually. It'd probably take a few weeks for me to get around to doing it. But other than that, um, yeah, so this is um, a uh, AR Acoustic Research ARELT1. I hope I'm saying that right. I believe it's an ELT one. Could be an ETL one. I believe it's an e ELT one. And I'm too lazy to flip it around and look at the back to see what the model number is. Call me lazy. I don't care. Thanks for watching.